Starship 36 just blew up at Starbase. The explosion destroyed fuel tanks, the test stand, and left SpaceX's testing program in ruins. But what NASA discovered next shocked everyone. While they thought SpaceX was done, Elon's team had been secretly transforming Pad B into something that could change space travel forever. How did SpaceX turn this disaster into their biggest breakthrough? And why is NASA so stunned by what they're seeing? Let's dive right in. That morning started like any other test day at Starbase. Ship 36 sat ready on the launch mount. Then everything went wrong. The explosion wasn't just loud, it was catastrophic. Fuel tanks ruptured. The ship quick disconnect system obliterated. Scorch marks appeared on equipment hundreds of feet away. But here's what nobody expected. SpaceX had been preparing for this exact moment for months. While the world watched the flames, something incredible was already happening at Pad B. Something that would shock NASA to its core. Picture this. While one part of Starbase burned, another part was being transformed into something extraordinary. Not a backup plan, but a revolution. The timeline will blow your mind. Construction at Pad B started with a simple tower platform. Then came the full launch tower. A flame trench appeared overnight. Finally, the orbital launch mount. But every single component was different from Pad A. Completely different. Why would SpaceX redesign their entire launch system from scratch? What did Elon's team know that the rest of the world didn't? The answer changes everything we thought we knew about space travel. Pad B isn't just another launch pad. It's a complete rethinking of how rockets should work. Remember the steel plate system at Pad A? The one that barely survived each launch? Pad B threw that concept out completely. Instead, dual flame buckets channel the inferno away from sensitive equipment. Think about the difference. One system tries to absorb punishment. The other redirects it entirely. The numbers tell the story. Pad A needs extensive repairs between launches. Pad B was designed for something unprecedented, rapid reuse. We're talking about the difference between rebuilding after every flight versus simply refueling and launching again. But the most shocking change, the orbital launch mount completely eliminates the traditional six fixed legs. This isn't an upgrade. This is a fundamental reimagining of rocket engineering. And that's just the beginning. Here's where this story gets absolutely mind-bending. Ship 37 completed its cryogenic testing in May. The explosion happened weeks later. SpaceX wasn't reacting to disaster. They were already three steps ahead. This reveals one of two possibilities. Either SpaceX has incredible foresight or they knew something catastrophic was coming. Which scenario sends chills down your spine? The V2 series faced constant developmental challenges. Ship 37 represents everything they learned from those failures. But here's the twist that nobody saw coming. SpaceX is already planning V3 series starting with Ship 39. So why risk V2 technology for Pad B testing? The answer reveals a strategy so brilliant it left NASA speechless. Using Ship 37 for Pad B isn't just smart. It's genius level risk management. If testing goes wrong, they're not risking their newest technology. If everything works perfectly, they validated an entirely new launch architecture in record time. NASA engineers are watching something unprecedented, a space company turning catastrophic failure into operational advantage. In weeks, not years, the architectural similarities between Massey and Pad B mean Ship 37 can interface seamlessly with the new system. It's like discovering your spare key doesn't just open the door, it opens the door to a mansion, but the real shock comes from what happens next. SpaceX isn't planning to recover from the setback. They're planning to dominate the entire industry. 25 Starship launches next year. Within four years, 400 launches annually? Let that number sink in. 400 launches per year. That's more than one launch every single day. Multiple Starships launching daily. Super heavy boosters reused hourly. Traditional rockets launch a few times per year. SpaceX is talking about hourly operations. This isn't incremental improvement. This is a complete paradigm shift that changes everything about human space access. But here's the question keeping NASA awake at night. How is this even physically possible? Pad B holds the answer. 
The modular design philosophy enables something never achieved before. True rapid turnaround, faster maintenance, quicker refueling, unprecedented operational efficiency. But Pad B is just the prototype. SpaceX plans to retrofit Pad A with identical technology once Pad B proves operational. Two pads become four, four become eight. The entire Starbase facility transforms around this revolutionary architecture. And Texas is only the beginning. Kennedy Space Center in Florida is getting the same treatment. LC-39A undergoes complete reconstruction with flame trench design. SLC-37, the former ULA facility, will adopt Pad B architecture after demolition. This isn't about fixing a problem. This is about building infrastructure for humanity's expansion beyond Earth. Version 3 Starship will stand 142 to 150 meters tall. That's taller than a 40-story skyscraper. New Raptor 3 engines will generate over 10,000 tons of total thrust. For perspective, the Saturn V that carried humans to the moon produced 3,400 tons of thrust. SpaceX is building rockets nearly three times more powerful. This level of raw power demands infrastructure capable of handling extreme forces. Pad B isn't just ready for today's starships. It's designed for the monsters of tomorrow. The implications are staggering. While SpaceX builds this infrastructure, what are their competitors doing? Blue Origin struggles with their first orbital attempt. ULA focuses on traditional single-use rockets. China's space program advances rapidly, but nowhere near this scale. SpaceX isn't just ahead. They're playing a completely different game. The question isn't whether others can catch up. It's whether they even understand what they're trying to catch up to. This infrastructure advantage compounds over time. Every successful Pad B launch proves the concept. Every rapid turnaround demonstrates superiority. Every milestone makes the gap impossibly wide. But not everything is solved. The COPV issue that destroyed Ship 36 remains a critical threat. SpaceX must analyze flight data and debris to prevent future catastrophes. The payload door failures from previous flights. Propellant leaks causing loss of control. Engine fires. Harmonic vibrations throughout the engine system. Each problem represents a potential showstopper. Yet SpaceX pushes forward with Pad B testing. Are they being reckless? Or do they possess solutions the public hasn't seen yet? Booster ignition systems need upgrades. Engine protection requires enhancement. Ship 37 and Booster 16 remain at the production site undergoing final preparations. The tension is building toward a moment that will either validate everything or expose fundamental flaws. Traditional aerospace companies would form committees, conduct lengthy studies, spend months planning their response. SpaceX could resume operations within weeks at an entirely new facility with completely upgraded technology. This isn't about having backup plans. This is about having backup plans superior to the original design. Pad B represents something unprecedented in aerospace history. The ability to adapt, evolve, and improve systems faster than problems can ground them. No space company has ever possessed this capability. The implications extend far beyond just recovering from setbacks. Right now, while Massey undergoes cleanup, all eyes focus on Pad B. Its readiness will determine whether SpaceX's audacious timeline becomes reality or remains science fiction. The advanced features and revolutionary design carry the weight of humanity's spacefaring future. Success validates not just the technology, but an entirely new approach to space exploration. Failure would set back not just SpaceX, but the entire industry's progress toward becoming a multi-planetary species. The stakes couldn't be higher. The timeline couldn't be tighter. And NASA's shock couldn't be more justified. Everything SpaceX has built leads to this moment. Every innovation, every risk, every calculated gamble converges on Pad B's first operational test. Will this revolutionary infrastructure fulfill its promise? Or will the technical challenges prove insurmountable? The answer determines whether humanity takes its next giant leap or stumbles back to Earth. So here we are. SpaceX turned their biggest disaster into their greatest breakthrough. NASA's shock isn't just about the technology. It's about witnessing a company that moves at the speed of innovation itself. But this raises a deeper question. 
Are we watching the birth of true space infrastructure? Or are we seeing the early stages of something even bigger? The next few months will tell us everything. Will Pad B deliver on its revolutionary promise? Can SpaceX really achieve 400 launches per year? And most importantly, what happens when version 3 Starship finally takes flight? Here at Space Corps, we'll be tracking every development, every test, every breakthrough. Because this isn't just about rockets anymore. This is about humanity's next chapter. What do you think? Is SpaceX moving too fast or not fast enough? Drop your thoughts below. And if you want to stay ahead of the space race, you know what to do. The future is launching. Are you ready to witness it? Ship 36 exploded. Billions in damage. Test site destroyed. Normal companies would delay for months. But SpaceX? They're doing something nobody expected. Flight 10 is getting massive changes. They might launch Ship 37 without any safety testing. No static fire. Nothing. This decision could save their timeline or create the biggest disaster in SpaceX history. Why would they risk everything on an untested rocket? The answer will shock you. Let's dive right in. Here's what really happened. Workers are pulling twisted metal chunks weighing tons from what was once SpaceX's crown jewel test site. The Massey facility completely destroyed. But this wasn't just any explosion. Ship 36 was sitting still, not flying, not moving, just there. Then it detonated like a bomb on the ground during a routine test. How does a rocket explode while it's basically parked? That question is keeping SpaceX engineers awake at night because the answer could end the entire Starship program. But something incredible happened next. Instead of delays, instead of shutting down, SpaceX made a decision so radical it's dividing the entire space industry. They're considering launching Ship 37 without any safety testing. No static fire, no dress rehearsal, nothing. Ship 37 sits ready in Mega Bay 2 right now. It passed its pressure tests, it survived the crushing forces that would destroy most vehicles. But skipping the final safety check? That's never been done on this scale. Would you board a plane that skipped its final inspection? That's exactly what SpaceX might do with a 50-story rocket packed with more explosive power than some nuclear weapons. The risk is astronomical. But the reason behind this gamble will shock you. Here's what SpaceX doesn't want you to know. Flight 6 with Ship 31 was nearly perfect. It reached over 21,000 kilometers per hour, rock solid, stable throughout the entire flight. It looked like SpaceX had finally cracked the code. Then came Flight 9 with Ship 35, same altitude, same time frame, but Ship 35 was 5,000 kilometers per hour slower. Ice started forming around the payload section just 16 minutes in. That's not weather. That's a massive fuel leak. The devastating truth. Starship Block 1 was actually better than Block 2. SpaceX went backwards. They downgraded their own design, and now they're paying the price with explosion after explosion. But why would they do this? The answer reveals something darker about what's happening inside SpaceX. Elon Musk quietly admitted something that should terrify every investor. Starship can only carry less than 50% of its promised payload. Let that sink in. They sold the world on a rocket that fundamentally cannot deliver what they promised. The Raptor engines were designed for massive thrust, but they can't handle it. Flight 7 literally vibrated itself to death. Flight 8 had engines overheating and failing mid-flight, so SpaceX started desperately cutting weight everywhere. Making the rocket lighter? More fragile. Pushing engines beyond their braking point. It's like removing the brakes from a race car to make it faster. Sure, it might work until you need to stop. But the Ship 36 explosion reveals something even more disturbing. Industry insiders are whispering about a cover-up SpaceX doesn't want public. During what they call the tent era, workers were allegedly mishandling COPV tanks. These are composite pressure vessels storing helium at crushing pressures. Million-dollar components that keep the rocket from imploding. 
Workers were reportedly slamming these tanks into mounting racks, creating invisible micro-damage. When those damaged tanks face flight pressures, they explode without warning. One certified COPV inspector claims that when problems were discovered, certain workers were banned from payload sections. That means SpaceX knew there were handling issues, but couldn't control them completely. If this is true, Ship 36 didn't explode because of design flaws. It exploded because of human negligence during manufacturing. Meanwhile, something nobody expected just happened. Honda, yes, the car company, successfully tested a reusable